Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. In this video, we're going to see if it would be worth turning one of these Ryzen powered mini PCs into a Steam machine in 2022. If you're familiar with the Steam Deck, you might notice that we've got the same operating system going here. This is SteamOS 3. It's actually Hollow ISO. I've done a full tutorial video on installing it on different hardware. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But personally, I've only been running this on Ryzen powered laptops, and I had a few viewers ask me to install this on a mini PC. So here's that video. Now I will say that this could be a very viable option for somebody with one of these tiny Ryzen powered PCs if they're looking for a console experience. This boots right up into the Steam Deck OS, as you can see. You can use a controller to navigate the full operating system. And if you did need a desktop interface, it's built in here so we can always move over to the desktop. You'll have a fully functional Linux powered desktop PC. Hollow ISO isn't officially from Valve. This is from a third party developer that's taken the Steam Deck's recovery image and packaged it in a way that we can install it on different PCs. It does have support for NVIDIA GPUs and Intel iGPUs, but I've personally had much better luck on AMD, be it integrated graphics or Radeon dedicated GPUs. So right now I'm just booting up uh, The Witcher 3, and everything that works on the Steam Deck does work on this operating system, at least with Ryzen. This does have system-wide FSR, and when it comes to these integrated graphics, especially the Vega graphics, that's something you definitely might want to turn on. But the whole experience here has been really console-like on these tiny PCs. We can navigate this full operating system here, minus the desktop portion if you ever want to get in there, with a controller. You can connect basically any Bluetooth controller and we can bring up the menu here to exit the game. We never have to pick up a mouse and keyboard, and we can access the overlay right here so we can get all of our performance stats while we're running this game here. You can also set this up with a limited frame rate. You can turn FSR on or off, and you can limit the wattage on the CPU and GPU. So before we jump into game testing, I did want to give you a quick look at this PC. This is the Morphine S500 Plus. I did a review on it, but we were running Windows. As you can see, we've got USB Type-C and USB 3.2 up front here. Not much going on around the sides here. We do have some ventilation because this is a pretty high-powered mobile CPU we have here. And just taking a look at the rear here, we've got our power input, four more USB ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and dual Ethernet. One of these is 1 gig, the other is 2.5. Plus, it's got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now, this operating system will work on basically any 3000 series up to the 6000 series Ryzen APUs. And with this mini PC here, we've got the Ryzen 9 5900HX. 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 with a boost up to 4.6. We've also got built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 2100 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, and a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD. If we were to compare the CPU performance with the Steam Deck and this little mini PC here, this is miles ahead on the CPU side of things. But when it comes to the GPU, we're still working with those Vega graphics. Remember, the Steam Deck is using RDNA2 graphics, and it's got DDR5 RAM. And since the iGPU uses system RAM as VRAM, it's just going to make that GPU perform much better than what we have here. When it comes to controllers, I've tested a few. I do have the Steam controller. I'm not a huge fan of it. Personally, I would rather just connect a PS4 or an Xbox One controller. And they do work over Bluetooth, but if you ever wanted to just plug it in through USB, you could also do that. So jumping back over to The Witcher 3, here we've got a low medium mix and we're at 720p with it. So we get really close to running this game at 60 FPS, and for some reason when I run it over SteamOS 3, I don't get frame tearing like I do with Windows when we're running under 60. I mean, I haven't seen any with this game here, and I know we're not at a constant 60, but it still feels really smooth. And remember, we can also enable the variable refresh rate here, so we can actually take this down to, let's say, 40 FPS. It's going to lock the game at 40. And we could take the settings up from here a little more. We could probably go up to high running this at 40 FPS. It's still a really enjoyable experience. And don't get me wrong, if I had more power with this mini PC, if it had a beefier GPU, then I would highly recommend running something like Windows on this. But we're already working with low spec graphics here and every little feature that we can enable does help out. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, and we do have a Steam Deck preset, so that's what I enabled here. It does turn some of the settings up to medium, and I don't have global FSR on, 
but we are set to performance from the settings in the game itself. So FSR is at performance, 720p, and if I was to take all of the settings down the low and lock it at 60, it'll run like that. We can actually get an average of around 68 FPS with all of the settings at low and FSR at performance. Here's Project Cars 2, medium settings, 720p, and global FSR is turned off. I thought we'd get a little more out of this. I mean, it's definitely playable, and if you wanted to lock it at 60, you can play it just fine. But I thought we'd be in the 90s with this game, given, you know, the age of it. Next up, we've got Elden Ring. We're at low settings, 720p, and uh, we just can't hit 60 with this. Even in Windows, we can't hit 60 with this setup here. I've tested it in the past. This is just a harder one to run on these iGPUs. But with the way it's set up right now, we can get an average of around 47 FPS, and this is basically the same average we get with the Steam Deck hardware. Definitely had to throw an older one in here, and for some reason, even if I turn V-Sync off, I can't get over 60 with it, but we are maxed out from the settings. And the final one here is Beam NG Drive. I've been playing this a lot lately. We're at medium settings, and that CPU really does help out with the performance. On the Steam Deck, I can get 60 at low settings, but with this, we can get an average of around 83 medium settings. So obviously, just like any operating system, running this on higher end hardware is definitely going to help out with the gaming performance. But if you're working with one of these tiny Ryzen powered PCs with low end graphics built in, then this is something I could recommend trying out. I mean, it's great to have kind of a console experience with these tiny PCs. This is something that could sit right underneath your TV. And all of the tweaks we have built in here for these Ryzen iGPUs does help out. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with this, and you can easily access everything you need from the controller while you're playing a game. So if you're interested in trying this out, I will leave a link to the GitHub page where you can download Hollow ISO. I'll also leave a link to the video I created on the full install tutorial. So I do have a couple more videos coming up. I've been working on a super small form factor mini PC with a dedicated Radeon GPU to install this right on so we could run it at higher resolutions and higher frame rates. So if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.